I'm so excited to see you all on this National Day of Action. Thousands of Move On members and our allies are rallying today in 145 rallies across the nation to demand our politicians clean up the corporate corruption in our nation's capital. We intend, we intend to ensure that democracy works for the other 98% of us Americans who cannot afford our own lobbyists or buy elections. When I say buy elections, I'm hoping you know what I'm talking about is a very real threat. Just last week, a company many of us respected, Target, tried to buy an election in Minnesota by spending $150,000 to back a far-right Republican candidate for governor. They were trying to buy a governor. Don't you wish you had the money to buy a governor? We'll never solve our most pressing problems like fixing the economy. get jobs for Americans and getting a sane energy policy if we don't clean up the corrupt influence that Wall Street and companies like BP have on our government and find that companies like Target are trying to buy. We have to restore democracy to work for the other 98% of us. And that's why we're gathered here today, because unless we get politicians to endorse the reforms outlined in this pledge, corporate corruption will continue to run rampant in Washington, D.C. We're here today to ask representatives Zoe Lofgren and Mike Honda to join the other 98% in cleaning up Congress by signing the Fight Washington Corruption Pledge. They have not done so yet. The pledge is simple. Three critical items. One, overturn the Supreme Court Citizens United ruling giving corporations the right to buy elections. Two, passing the Fair Elections Act now to empower grassroots-fueled candidates. And three, passing lobbyist reforms to radically erode corporate lobbyists' influence. Right. Over 400,000 people have signed the 98% pledge to fight Washington corruption. And more than 20 members of Congress and candidates have also signed on, taking a stand against corruption by corporate lobbyists. There's a growing movement demanding that Congress clean up its act. I support the Fight Washington Corruption Pledge because it's the best way to make government work for us who aren't represented by corporate lobbyists. How many lobbyists are there? There are more than 13,000 lobbyists in Washington, D.C. prowling around on behalf of corporate interests. Clients spent over $3.47 billion last year to pay for their services. That's three billion, a lot of money. So what's a corporate lobbyist's job? A corporate lobbyist's job is to fight on behalf of their employer to make sure laws, rules, and regulations do not get in the way of corporate profits. In turn, lobbyists receive high salaries, so they find lots of ways to curry favor in Washington. This system ensures that an ordinary person doesn't stand a chance in getting legislation passed to benefit themselves and their families. From BP to Wall Street bailouts, the news frustrates and angers voters like me. But it's important we recognize that these crises aren't caused by just a few out-of-control corporations. The real problem is unchecked corporate control in Washington. It's time for politicians, including Representatives Zoe Lofgren and Mike Honda, to answer the question. Will they help clean up corporate corruption in Washington, or will they stand with corporate lobbyists? Now, what I'd like you to know is raise your hand if you're a Wall Street banker. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've, got, if you've got a $10 million bonus this year. Raise your hand if you've got an army of lobbyists in Washington. Raise your hand if you destroyed the economy, then got a bailout from the Fed. Nobody here, huh? Not a lot of folks here today that way. Thing is, there aren't a lot of folks in general. You take the CEOs, the Wall Street bankers, you take their lobbyists, you take the most connected and privileged people in the country, and at tops, you've got maybe 2% of the population. Should they be calling the shots? No. 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 They're feeling, there's a feeling in the country that democracy is broken. Working women and men, we're feeling it. Oh, but it's working just fine for Wall Street. It's working just fine for this 2% who think they're the only ones who matter. They've captured Washington, and they've rigged the system in their favor. Is that the way it should be? 
No. Are we going to let it stand? No. no. Raise your hand if you're paying off a mortgage. Raise your hand if your, you and your kid had to take a loan out to go to college. Raise your hand if you ever had to rely on an unemployment check to pay the rent. Raise your hand if you make less than $200,000 a year. Well, that's us. We're the 98%. Last line, we are America and we want our country back. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about our representatives, Lofgren and Honda. They have not supported the pledge. They have good reasons. They have been supportive in the past, as with the health initiative, and we thank them for that. But right now, we need a better change, a bigger change in government, and they have to be a part of it. They've got to join. We've got to have at least 100 representatives in Congress alone that accepts this pledge and starts moving on it. So we want them to join those 100. Send by, them an email. Yeah, send by fall. So do emails, go to their website, suggest that they get off their duffs and do a bill. Yes, they've done a bill for uh, the Fair Elections Act, and yes, it then went down. That was another day. Another day today. Start again. Keep doing it. Be insistent. That's what their job is. They're reflecting what we want. So you have to be insistent with them. Go to their website, email them, suggest that they do a constitutional amendment. Set, suggest to Zolofkin, she's the committee chair of the Ethics Committee. She should know that this is wrong, that corporations have all of this money to spend. And let me tell you, the Democrats are going to be really upset when the only party in the government is Republican. And they're running scared about that, but they don't seem to know what to do. So if they don't have an idea, we do. Send them a message. They've got to change the rules so that we win and not them. Um, I talked to Zoe Lofgren's chief of staff because she was not there, uh, and they were assuring me that, and our group, that w they were doing everything they could to support <laughs> the lobbying reform. Uh, automatically, when Obama won, they decided that lobbyists no longer could uh, f give gifts or travel expenses to the representatives. Big deal. That's the end of it, but there's so much more. The, a congressperson can become a lobbyist because they've been funded by the corporations. Why can't they become a lobbyist? And they do. And then they revert back. So who are they working for? You know, it's not us. So we want to acknowledge that there's going to be slow success. We're going to have to do this for the long term, the long haul. But keep doing it to be consistent and to be continual. At uh, the same time, our Lof uh, Lofgren and Honda must initiate legislation, and we have to suggest that. Doing nothing is not going to help. A democracy requires work from us all, not just from our representatives. Give them your ideas, your support, your critique if necessary. We are in this together for the long haul.